Hello Internet! In this video we are going to be looking at Docker and how to spin up a Mongo instance inside of Docker that you can actually access on your local PC. Uh, so the reason we're looking at this is let's say you want to test out say Mongo uh, or some other server or whatever. How would you do that? Uh, part, of the, part of the issue is if you just start installing that locally on your own machine, if you start screwing that up or you want to say test destroying it, it's really hard to get it back. Uh, and so, so handling some of that is a little bit difficult and also it isn't the same. Uh, so if I were to try to do that on say Linux versus Windows, the installation process is going to be different and things are going to behave differently. With Docker you can containerize things so they are, think of it like a even smaller type of virtual machine so it, it will spin up a completely isolated container that is specifically designed to handle Mongo. Uh, and so in this case, we're going to be looking at the Docker Hub, which is a repository for images. Uh, I am not super familiar with Docker or Mongo, so we're going to be kind of learning together. Uh, but this should allow us to pull down the image and then actually be able to use that to spin up a, a pod in, or a not a pod, that's different terminology, to spin up a uh, image inside of Docker to spin up our little container. So to find images, you can actually just go to the Docker hub. So hub, ooh, that's not right. Hub docker.com is going to have a whole list of things to grab. Uh, this may have been the wrong place to go. Okay, this should work. But if you want to find say Mongo, you just search for it and you'll find a whole bunch of things. If you want to set up, say, a Postgres server, you can grab that here, and that will get you a Postgres server from in Mongo. So you should, if you want like relational database, that's an option. If you want NoSQL, this is an option. So it should be the same for pretty much everything. We're just going to be dealing with a few different things. So it's going to talk a little bit about the images and some references for that, who it's from, what Mongo is, and so. What we end up wanting to do is, is there actually, those are comments. Why is that all the way at the bottom? But anyway, the first thing we need to do is actually pull the image, which is going to pull the latest. You can see it says uh, it's using the default tag, the latest tag. So these images are going to be versioned so you can actually see which version you're pulling. Uh, I don't really know which version we're grabbing, but we're grabbing a version. <laughs> So that's not strictly relevant, but we should have a Mongo instance. So if I go to Docker now, we should be able to find that uh, Docker. What are we looking for? Docker images. And you can, so if I pull up these images here, I have no idea what that is, but here is the new one that we just grabbed, our Mongo instance. So we should now be able to start that. So if I go up again, we're going to get to our running it, start the Mongo instance. I believe these are all unique for each of those uh, containers that you're going to grab. But all we need to do, well, first, let's do a Docker PS, which is going to list the currently running uh, containers. There's nothing there. We don't have any containers running. So let's do a Docker run and name our thing uh, the world of zero Mongo. I, I guess that'll work. And we're going to spin up Mongo. And I think, is that enough? Sure, that should be enough. So if I go to Docker PS now, it should be there. Do Docker is running. So we can connect to it now using this bit, which is kind of gross, uh, and it's also kind of uh, off the screen. So docker run, and we're going to connect to our world of zero Mongo, and link our world of zero Mongo to the Mongo command. Uh, is this what I want? I don't think this is what I want. <laughs> Application that uses Mongo. No, 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 no. We don't, we don't need any of this. All right. 
scratch that. We're not going to do that. I don't want to do that. Um, one of the things that I use, tend to like to do is to run Mongo or to run an application accessing it locally, which doesn't actually work. Uh, so I don't think I have Mongo installed. Maybe I do. Uh, but yeah, Mongo is not recognized. So if we do a chocolatey uh, search for Mongo, we should be able to find all of the packages on chocolatey that have Mongo support. So let's do Choco install MongoDB. Uh, and this should go and grab the Mongo database stuff, which should get us all of our uh, CLI stuff, which should hopefully <laughs> enable us to actually connect to this. One of the things that Mongo will do if I just run that Mongo command, it's going to attempt to connect to the local database. So if Mongo was installed and working, and that Docker was exposed locally on our own machine, I would expect to actually be able to connect to that just by running Mongo. It would automatically connect. There's no default credentials or anything. So we would just get in and be able to do our thing. So uh, we're going to let this run and install. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about what we actually need to get done because this isn't going to work. Um, containers are isolated. They don't expose anything that they shouldn't. So all of the ports on this container, those are all closed. And Mongo is actually going to expose its own port 27017. The problem with that is it's only exposed to pods or to uh, containers that say they need it. That's what this connection bit is for. You'd be connecting your Mongo instance to another application that is going to use Mongo. So let's see if it exists. Whoa. Mongo help. Shoot. MongoDB. I may need to restart this PowerShell quick. Ha. <laughs> That's unfortunate. One sec. Let me do that and see if it changed things. So uh, I, I think this is going to, well, yeah, I think this is going to work. Um, it doesn't look like it exposes it on your path. So you actually have to m navigate to the actual command. So something like this should work. Yes. And so it's going to attempt to connect. You can see it's trying to connect to our local host. And the connection failed. Uh, so you can actually provide the path here, like we can actually do this and it will do the same thing. You can see it's trying to do the same thing. You can pass it in actually the connection string and it will try, but it's none of that's going to work. And the reason is our Docker uh, image isn't correct. We're not exposing the port so that we can use it. So what we want to do is actually expose that port so that our local host can access the containerized port, so which is kind of confusing if you're not familiar with containers, but effectively think of a container as sort of its own separate thing. It's totally separate from your machine. So if you want to blow up a container and do something really stupid to it, it the effects of that aren't going to leave your container or the containerized environment, which when you set up Docker, it's going to ask for certain resources that it can use. So it kind of isolates the thing. What we're going to do is I need help. <laughs> Docker, I want to destroy this. And I always forget how to do that. <laughs> Let's see, Docker RM. Ooh, that's not, <laughs> that's not how you spell Docker. Docker, uh, I think we actually want to stop the world of zero. Well, I can do it this way and then we'll, we'll see what happens. If I try to remove the world of zero Mongo, it's going to say you cannot remove a running instance. So we need to do Docker stop world of zero Mongo, which is going to stop that instance. 
And so if I do a Docker PS now, it's gone, doesn't exist. So I can remove it now and it's totally gone, doesn't exist. Well, it, yeah, that specific version of it doesn't exist. We still have the pulled image though. So I can rerun, where is it? This, which spins up our actual instance. And so I'm going to expose the port like this. <laughs> I think this is how, how you do this. If I get this wrong, I'm gonna have to Google it. So we'll see. But effectively what this is doing is it's exposing a port from the image onto your local machine and allowing your local machine to actually connect to that. It's effectively forwarding the port. Uh, so what I should be able to do now is see it running. Oh crap, <laughs> or not. Exited 13 seconds ago. Why though? Docker, is there a info? That's not how you do that. We need information about our container. Ah, let's do inspect. This is kind of uh, me learning this as well. I th I'm hoping this will tell us what is going on. Names, platforms, all that other fun stuff. Ah, uh, so it, it looks like it's passing that P to Mongo. That's not what I want. I want that to be part of what I'm doing. So we're going to kill this again. That's not right. Stop it. Remove it. And let me go and find out how to actually forward this port to my local machine so that we can connect locally because that didn't work. So one sec. So it turns out I was right. Uh, just not quite as right as I needed to be. So we need to do a run but we need prior to the name, I think we can put it before the name. Let's do the port. Like so. And that way it doesn't treat it as an argument to our Mongo instance. It treats it as an argument to the Docker thing. So if I do that, it's going to ask me if I want to allow the port through my firewall, say yes. And now it should exist. So I should uh, be able to do Mongo and it connects. And so now I am actually on the Mongo instance running inside of this Docker container, which this was a long way to get here. It took like 15 minutes, which actually isn't that bad. Uh, but once you get this down, you can actually get these things spun up really quickly. And it's fairly easy to actually set them up so that like a script can run them. So you can actually just pull the image, uh, stand up the thing and do that in a few lines. Once you actually know, know what you're doing, which I clearly do not, but yeah. So I can actually be sitting here on our test Mongo db git contain. That's not it. Oh uh, shoot. So git databases and git collection test and uh, we can get like uh we'd have to do find and something like that and do a count so we should get zero because there's no no elements uh if i want to grab the collection do a test and say insert let's see how well i actually remember how to do this not very well so let's say our name is world of zero. And that will just be it. Uh, so Docker use it, or we're on Mongo now. Mongo is going to use JSON. I can actually scroll down. That would probably help. But uh, so this way we're effectively creating a, a document in Mongo. I think this works. I've never actually tried this. I 
tend to avoid manga for other reasons. But anyway, how'd that go? Awfully. Attempted to save a string. Documented expected. Well, that works well. What if I get rid of the string stuff? Cool. <laughs> so I can make things up. And the cool thing is like, I can make this up and not worry about anything bad happening. Like you saw, I was deleting these Docker containers and wasn't too concerned about it. That's sort of the point. Uh, you can blow them away. They're containerized. They're by themselves. So the only thing, well, ideally the only thing that can go wrong is the container explodes and then you just build the container again. So if I do a search now or a find and try to find it on no rules, that, that will just return all the results. And so we'll get this new element, the new record that has an ID generated with a ID or a my name. And that should be it. So I can actually quit this. What happens if I'm curious now. Docker restart world of zero Mongo. This should restart it, I think. Yeah. So if I do a Docker PS, we should see the status says it's only been up for two seconds now. So if I reconnect to Mongo, I should be able to redo this fine and all of my data is still there. We didn't lose anything by restarting this or anything like that. Uh, so if the you restart your computer or you just want to stop these because you're doing like gaming or whatever, you can come back and it will all be there. So I don't know if this is <laughs> helpful for anybody. It's probably a longer way to learn Docker than anything else, but it gives you a really fun way to a fun playground to kind of grab these services, throw them together and see what happens. So I hope that's interesting. I hope you guys find it useful and maybe you make something cool with it. So if there's any feedback you guys have for me, uh, anything you want me to change or do better, let me know in the comments and I will definitely look into that. Other than that, consider joining our Discord. There's a link in the description. We talk about all sorts of things like development, people show off their projects. It's cool. Uh, other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. So until then, see you, internet.